Hi, this is Tommy Stevens with K2 Enterprises. Welcome to another in a series of technology tips. Today's tip focuses on how to utilize the automated sales tax feature that is now found in QuickBooks Online. Of course, the reason we might want to use this feature is to streamline and simplify the rather complex process that exists with trying to comply with sales and use tax regulations across the United States. Of course, most accounting and financial professionals are acutely aware of the complex sales tax structure that currently exists in the U.S. Because sales and use taxes are the responsibility of the individual states and counties and cities and other taxing jurisdictions within those states, a complex and rather disorganized set of laws and regulations has arisen over the years. Of course, the Supreme Court's recent Wayfair decision is likely to lead to more businesses being required to collect sales taxes on transactions that cross state lines, and we believe that this will lead to even more compliance cost and complexity, particularly as small businesses are trying to keep up with the over 10,000 different sales tax jurisdictions that exist across the U.S. However, if you're running QuickBooks Online, you do have access to an automated sales tax feature, which is a tool that you can use to streamline and simplify your sales tax billing, collection, reporting, and payment issues. As its name implies, of course, the automated sales tax feature is there to automate as many sales tax related tasks as might be possible. All you need to do is go in and set it up, which, as you'll see momentarily, is a very easy process, and then you'll be ready to take advantage of the features that this tool provides. Now, in the QuickBooks Online client that you're currently looking at, I have already established the automated sales tax feature. I've already set it up, but I'm going to go and show you how you could set it up and how you can add additional taxing jurisdictions uh, to your particular instance of QuickBooks Online. You'll find access to this feature by clicking on Taxes in the left sidebar, as you can see, and then clicking on Sales Taxes. Now, if you had not yet set up this feature on this screen, you would be presented with an option that says that you want to, or do you want to turn on automated sales tax? And of course, you would respond uh, in the affirmative to that. We are, however, since this is already set up in this particular file, we are going to click in the upper right-hand corner under Sales Tax Settings to show you what it's like to add additional taxing jurisdictions to your existing implementation. You should know that previously I had gone in and taken the Louisiana Department of Revenue along with Tangipahoa Parish and established those as effectively my default sales tax locations. But as you can also see, I've set up the Georgia Department of Revenue, I've set up the city of Birmingham, Alabama, and also the city of Panama City, Florida as additional sales tax jurisdiction because perhaps my business sells products into each of those areas from our base location in Louisiana. Let's suppose for the sake of argument that you had an additional jurisdiction that you needed to add to your sales tax structure. And that is going to be something that we think will happen rather frequently uh, now based on the Supreme Court's Wayfair decision. That's uh, actually a fairly simple process to add an additional taxing jurisdiction uh, over here in the upper right hand corner. We're simply going to click add an agency and then we can scroll through this listing of agencies that is already available to us in QuickBooks Online. Suppose, for example, that uh, we've realized that we need to begin billing and collecting sales taxes, for example, in Denver, Colorado. And Colorado certainly has a rather complex sales tax structure. You can actually see as I scroll through this listing, I'm now in the, into the state of Colorado. And I'll just scroll down until we get to Denver. And then I will click on Denver, of course, and I will indicate the frequency with which we file our sales tax returns for Denver and then the start of the reporting period. And let's just say that that's going to be 01, 01, 2019. And guess what? That's all there is to do with respect to setting up Denver, Colorado as a new taxing jurisdiction. Because what happens now in the background is QuickBooks Online is monitoring all of the changes in sales tax rates. And as each of these taxing jurisdictions has a change in sales tax rate, then that sales tax rate will be populated into QuickBooks Online. We should also understand, of course, that sales taxes are being driven not only by the tax rate within a particular jurisdiction, but also by the location of your customer. So when you set up your customers in QuickBooks Online, sales taxes will be billed based on the billing address of the customer unless you also establish a shipping address. 
And if you do indeed establish a shipping address for the customer, then QuickBooks Online, more specifically the automated sales tax feature inside QuickBooks Online, will indeed use that shipping address for the customer. So taxes are going to be based on our home state. They're going to be based on the billing address of the customer. But if that billing address is superseded by a shipping address, then the shipping address is going to be used. And taxes are also going to be billed at the item level based on whether a particular item that might exist in your item list has been marked as being taxable or not. Of course, in virtually all locations, services are not taxable, whereas products are. So if we're selling services, we would mark those as non-taxable items. But if we're selling products, we would mark those as taxable. On top of that, some products in some taxing jurisdictions are, or shall we say, receive a special type of tax treatment. For example, in some jurisdictions, the sales of alcoholic beverages and carbonated beverages are taxed differently than the sales of, shall we say, just groceries, for example. And so if there are indeed special taxing uh, considerations regarding uh, the items that we're selling, then we would indeed need to go in and address those. Now, to address those special considerations that might exist at a product level, let's go over here to the uh, left side of the screen and click on Sales, followed by Products and Services. And obviously, this is a very, shall we say, a skeleton-type file that I have set up here, not a tremendous amount of data in it. And I'm going to go to the all-encompassing item of Widget, as you can see, and I'm going to indicate that I want to edit that item. Now, as I edit that item, you will notice on the right-hand side, I have marked that item as being taxable. But if there were special taxing considerations surrounding that item, then I would go in and begin to indicate, for example, what type of item it is, what category it falls into. Perhaps this is a food and grocery item. And notice that next to food and grocery, there are 43 different considerations that are available. Let's select food and grocery. And then immediately to the right of food and grocery, what we sell, this is where we would indicate the very specific um, type of tax treatment that, that this particular item qualifies for. Uh, maybe it's a carbonated beverage, maybe it's restaurant furniture, maybe it's coconut water. Uh, the list goes on and on again. You'll see a total of 43 different items there. And again, depending upon what taxing jurisdiction you happen to be in, that item may be taxed differently based, of course, on the combination of sales tax category and what you sell. Now, if that is just an ordinary run-of-the-mill item that receives no special taxing considerations, then we do not have to indicate, in fact, we would not indicate uh, either a category or a more specific what you sell category. We would just leave that marked as taxable. So, as is typically the case with so many applications that we're working with this day, it's all in the setup of the feature. Now that we have this feature set up inside QBO, I'll give you a couple of quick examples of what it might look like in action. Let's suppose that we wanted to sell, or we're going to issue an invoice. And by the way, this works on invoices, but it also works on uh, sales receipts. So if a customer just walks into your store and, and pays you cash or writes you a check, et cetera, uh, and you're not actually uh, billing it out on accounts receivable, the, this automated sales tax feature works there as well. So I'm now going to sell some product to one of my customers. In this case, the customer that I'm going to sell to is this customer whose name is our business sample customer. I select the customer. You will notice the presence of a billing address and a shipping address, albeit those two addresses are indeed the same. Uh, so in this case, that won't matter too much. Let's suppose that we are in the year 2019. So I'm just going to uh, say that this transaction is occurring on January 1st, 2019. And this customer wants to buy a widget from me. Now, when I choose to apply the widget to the uh, sales tax, I'm sorry, the, to the um, invoice itself, you can see that QuickBooks Online has immediately reached out and based on the presence of the shipping address, it has identified that the appropriate tax rate for this item appears to be about almost 9.5%. Um, if I click on this sales tax link on the, over here on the right-hand side of the invoice, I can actually see the detailed breakout of all of the sales taxes that are being collected for that particular transaction. In this example, let's assume that that's all we need to do. So we're just going to go ahead and save that particular invoice. 
and then we will turn around and issue another invoice in a different taxing jurisdiction so you can kind of get a flavor of what's happening there. Let's go to our um, individual sample customer. Now our individual sample customer, as you can see, is going to be based in Plano, Texas. Uh, that is their address, Plano, Texas. And you may recall that we do not have Texas set up as a taxing jurisdiction. Uh, we are going to go in in this case and say that we are billing this customer uh, effective January 1st, 2019, also for a widget, just as we did before, one widget. And you will notice that QuickBooks Online is billing the same sales tax as we saw just a few moments ago, 9.45%, or in this case, $9.45. And of course, the reason that is the case is this particular company that we're looking at, our, our demo company in QBO, is actually based out of Hammond, Louisiana. So it is based in Hammond, Louisiana. The customer is in Plano, Texas, and we never went in and set up either a shipping address to indicate that this product was being delivered to Plano, Texas, nor did we set up Texas Department of Revenue or some equivalent agency in the state of Texas as a sales tax agency. Consequently, QuickBooks Online is interpreting this as a transaction where perhaps the customer walked into my office, bought the product in Louisiana, even though they are based out of Texas. And of course, in a situation like that, the Louisiana tax would be the appropriate tax. So that is why in this example, QBO is billing the Louisiana tax, even though the customer is headquartered out of Texas. Now let's go and save that transaction and create yet a different transaction. In this case, we're going to pick up a customer named John Smith. Now see that John Smith has an address in, in Kennesaw, Georgia, but uh, has a delivery address down in Atlanta, Georgia. And so let's see what happens when we go to Bill John Smith. Now I can tell you that the sales tax rate in this suburban location in the metro Atlanta area is 6%. But clearly, when we look at the sales tax that's being billed over here on the right-hand side, that is certainly not coming in at 6%. In fact, that's much closer to 9%, and that is because of the presence of the ship-to address. In this case, the ship-to address for that particular customer has a different tax rate. And as I mentioned earlier, QuickBooks Online Automated Sales Tax looks at the ship-to address and bills the tax based on the ship-to address if indeed there is a ship-to address. Now, of course, we could click and look at the sales tax that's being billed there and see that it's a 4% state of Georgia sales tax, a 3% Fulton County sales tax, and then a 1.9% Atlanta sales tax. Of course, I could create different scenarios and additional scenarios for you. I think, however, in the examples that we've run through already, you're beginning to get a sense of just how powerful the automated sales tax feature in QuickBooks Online really is and how much time it could certainly save small business owners and managers inside small businesses with respect to sales tax billing, collection, reporting, etc. As we know, sales tax compliance, of course, is increasingly becoming a major headache for small business owners across the United States. And again, the, in the aftermath of the uh, Supreme Court's Wayfair decision, we believe that this will continue to be a growing problem and a growing issue for most small businesses. Trying to stay on top of over 10,000 different sales tax rates by county, by city, by special taxing jurisdiction, et cetera, that is almost impossible for a business of any size. Fortunately, if we choose to take advantage of the automated sales tax feature inside QBO, all of that becomes automated, and that then affords us a tremendous amount of relief with respect to trying to stay in compliance with these different sales tax rates, jurisdictions, laws, et cetera. I hope this information has been useful to you. We thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to uh, sharing additional technology tips with you in the future. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.